Butin and a fight broke out this guy got into the car rolled her over a number of times and he got off with it Was she killed? Yeah, in instantly As soon as the festive season draws to a close the town again empties and amongst the settled community the same questions surface How have so many of the town's traveller population come to be so incredibly wealthy? And when they're not in Rathkeel, where do the travellers go for ten months of every year? Looking into what some sources described as the travellers' secret millions seemed an obvious next step. The vast majority of Rathkeel's wealthy travellers have, of course, earned their money legitimately through antiques, property and countless other concerns. But according to my sources, there were some who chose to operate outside the law. They, they go abroad. And they sell stuff, they sell generators, toolkits, the tar, do tar macadam. That's how they earn their money. Wherever there's money to be made, they'll go. And what kind of wealth would you be talking about? Some of them would be millionaires, no question of a doubt. Worth an awful lot of money. News reports say that the work travellers do, and Rathkeel travellers do, whilst they're abroad, is dodgy, that they're travelling con men. What would you say to that? Majority of the Rathkeel travellers do good work. There would be a few common men in Rathkeel, though. That dirty money lined some of Rathkeel's streets was a huge claim, but I soon found floods of evidence to support it. A crooked minority of the town's travellers had, it seemed, established themselves as globe-trotting con men who, for ten months of each year, fan out across the globe, running scams, targeting the vulnerable, and making vast sums of money in the process. How deeply rooted is crime here amongst a section of Rathkeel's traveller community? Deep. Very deep. Incredibly, reports have surfaced in such faraway places as Australia. In 2009, the Bishop O'Brien brothers ran aground in Sydney when the authorities nabbed them with a maritime container's worth of faulty generators. All Rathkeel residents, the three quickly left the country but not before attracting the media spotlight. Do you mind the camera, please, in my face? But what about oh, those generators? I buy these off a person. I'm only storing these here. Are you a policeman? No, I'm not. I'm a investigator with the Department of Fair Trading. With that, he's off. It's a classic getaway. Experts say the generators are falsely labelled and possibly lethal. This farmer was almost a victim. Two Irish guys, very aggressive salesmen. Yeah, they weren't going to leave without telling you something, I don't think. Luckily, he stopped his check. These particular rogue traders um, have been brought to task. The men were threatened with arrest if they ever again tried to enter Australia. Closer to home, fresh footprints were also traced to Milan in Italy, where a work crew from Rathkeel made a narrow escape after a tarmac Adam scam turned sour. Costo 7000 euro che il povero malcapitato paga con un assegno subito incassato. A distanza di un mese però l'asfaldo si sfalda, la strada è di nuovo piena di buche, insomma il lavoro era una truffa. Further research turned up reports from Oslo in Norway. Utenlandske stein legger ligar er tilbake. De lurer det til å legge stein eller asfalt ved huset til en svært billig penge. Hei, hei, hei! De jobber som regel svart, vil ha forhåndsbetalt, og ofte utfører de elendig arbeid. And from all across France, where I would soon find evidence of my own. These were links, stone-clad and iron cast, that tied this splinter group of Rathkeel's traveller community, dubbed the Rathkeel Rovers by some international media, to incidents, crime and scams which, according to sources, netted them hundreds of thousands each year. Most people say it's hardly worth, you know, pulling off a scam that you're only going to make, you know, 5,000 euro on. But if you do three of those a day, and you do it seven days a week for ten months of the year, it adds up to a lot of money. In taking a closer forensic look at the nuts and bolts of this multi-million euro operation, I found a former employee whom, having crossed Europe with a work crew from Rathkeel, was willing to share their secrets. You were laying asphalt, you were laying time, Academy. How quickly did you realise that it was all a scam? First two minutes. There was no real, like, equipment or proper, like, stuff that you would associate with a proper company, you know? It was just thrown into a van with a few wheelbarrows and go to the job, so... And how would they find the customers? How would they get the business? It's the same story all the time. It's we're an Irish company doing the motorways. We've left over tarmac and what we're going to do is we want to do a few jobs with the tarmac, you know, 
And that's basically it. It was all a con. There was no real foundation works put in. There was no um, proper clearance of the driveways. It was all a con. Do you know what I mean? They would go in, they'd suss the place out, suss the owners out. If they thought they could get a lot of money, they'd put up the price. And what kind of money would they charge for these jobs? Oh, depending on the size, 4,000, 5,000. Factory job, 10,000, 20,000. Would they intimidate customers into paying? I'd often see them threaten people, will come back, burn out your car, burn out your house. That's what they do, do you know? They, they kind of prey on the weak people, do you know what I mean? It'll always be on the countryside and they'll generally target older people, retired people. He then recalled how there were no limits to who the crew he worked with would scam or what they would do to get paid. The most disturbing one, I suppose, was the time when we were in Munich, in Germany. We heard of a job in a monastery, do you know? And uh, it was a big enough job. And I see them hassling nuns and priests for money, do you know? And at the time, they actually they got them to pay a fortune. I've just heard from a source and he tells me that over the past number of days a so-called work crew has left Rathkeel and are headed for Paris in France and interestingly with them is a cargo of several hundred faulty generators. Now if I can track them down in Paris and if I can convince them to sell me one of those generators then I can prove first of all that they're faulty, I can prove there are con men here in Rathkeel and I can prove they earn serious money doing it. Rathkeel in County Limerick is the small rural settlement known to many as the town that travellers took over. And in looking into the finer print of Ireland's most publicised clash of cultures, I had almost by chance unearthed links to national and international crime. I'd often see them threaten people will come back, burn out your car, burn out your house. That's what they do, do you know? Travellers from within Rathkeel had told me of a vastly profitable criminal network that crisscrossed the globe running scams and now I was headed overseas to track down a small crew whom, according to my source, were headed for Paris in France where they would sell faulty generators at hugely inflated prices to naive locals. The main difficulty with trying to track this particular Rathkeel work crew is that even when they're inside cities they tend to move around every couple of days and there is of course over two million people in Paris city centre so that's almost half the entire population of Ireland making this needle in a haystack type stuff but the three major campsites that they're staying in at the moment I'm told are here, here and here so in the morning that's, that's where we're going to start. Overnight, however, the plan took a sudden and unexpected turn. Early the next morning, I was headed an hour or so out of the city towards a small town where the crew I was tracking had supposedly been spotted. I've been up and driving since first light now because the search has been narrowed to where we are now, a place called Etomp, it's 30 kilometres south of Paris City and this, I'm told, is where that convoy uh, have come and settled in and are looking for work. Uh, so with a bit of luck, in a couple of hours, we might have tracked them down. After a half a dozen hours spent scouring the village and its outskirts, the trail did, however, run cold. Locals knew nothing of any Irish visitors, traveller or otherwise. Okay. Not two. Road after narrow country road, cul-de-sac after cul-de-sac, turned up nothing and local campsites were next to deserted. No sign. Doesn't, uh, doesn't look like the kind of place you stay short term either, so... With each hour that passed, it seemed more and more likely that the tip-off had been bogus, that I'd been steered down a dead end. Frustrated, empty-handed and ready to throw in the towel, I started back on the road to Paris, but as a last roll of the dice, I then doubled back to try my luck at the local police station. Inside, I was handed a sliver of hope, directions to an illegal campsite less than a mile away. And minutes later, that small twist of fate proved hugely significant. Because there, in remotest Paris, sat a vast convoy of luxury cars and caravans, all carrying the Rathkeel seal. 
just around the corner here is what they call a Cindy or Gypsy site here in France and we drove past just a few minutes ago and saw bays full of caravans, there were luxury cars and most importantly for us there were vans, transit vans with Limerick registration so we've come thousands of miles to find Rathkeel travellers and it looks like we just have. Less than an hour later, the first of the transit vans made a sharp exit from the site. They were on the move, and I stayed close behind. After an hour and a half of weaving through Paris traffic, the van slowed to a crawl, then stopped in a run-down suburb. Crowds started to gather, and when the back doors swung open, I could see cardboard boxes, boxes which from a distance looked large enough to hold a power generator. I strapped on a hidden camera, left the crew behind, and walked towards the van, realising that to avoid blowing my cover, I'd have to do as the locals do, and speak in a French accent. I make delivery in my van. Is, um, you are English? Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Is it possible to buy? No, because I make delivery for my father. Delivery for your father? Yeah. I'm waiting for a person. I do not see him before. Okay. So I'm waiting for him to come to see. Okay, my friend, um, mon ami, he lives in the area. He said that you said toolkit, uh, generator. So I have been walking, <laughs> looking for you. He said you were going to come today. Um, and I have money. I have. I, have, I, have, I will give you my father's number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, can, you can call him, yeah. and he will tell me, and I will make delivery yeah. for you. Okay. I was given a French mobile number and told to call his father that same day. Today? Today you ring him now mm. and you speak to him and you tell him what you want and he will call me mm. and he will tell me to come here and I will be sure. Okay, I can speak. The generators are basically crap. You get one in the box and they're all stamped up with diesel wrote in it and Honda wrote in it and at the end of the day it's not, it's just rubbish. How long will it take before that breaks? You'd be lucky if it ever went. The more I looked back to that earlier meeting, the more I wondered if my cover had been blown. He had seemed deeply suspicious from the moment I arrived, as had the crowd gathered around me. Later that evening, I decided to call the number I was given and hope for the best. A man calling himself John answered. At first, he seemed cagey, unsure, but eventually he agreed the next day delivery of what he referred to as a top-of-the-range generator worth over 800 euro, and importantly, he claimed it was run by a Honda engine. The venue and amount were decided, and the deal was on. At 10am the next morning, we were back in position outside the halting site, and again, it was the blue transit van that was first to leave. The hope was they were headed for the agreed meeting point, and soon it became clear they were. I saw the van pull over, then park, and fitted with the same hidden camera, I made my approach ready to close the deal. What is the make? I haven't. I am not familiar with with that. Yeah. No Honda. I saw your father said is is Honda. No, the motor is done by Honda. It's got a motor Honda, you know. Okay. Can you help me to lift to the car? Yeah. Okay. I'll give you the money. Can you give me a receipt? Yeah, I can give you the deal was done. I had a receipt in my pocket and thankfully I'd walked away without a scratch. But still there was work to do. But if these generators were central to a pan-European scam, one that had earned Rathkeel travellers hundreds of thousands over the years, then I wanted to know just how dodgy or faulty they are. Mr. Gomez Romero, an electrical engineer with over 30 years' experience and a Paris resident, 
agreed to take a look and it didn't take him long to see through the scam. 